What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. Just coming to bring you another video. Um, I'm going to name this video Power, right? Because uh, you Israelites, so-called blacks, native indigenous Indians, Pacific Islanders, native indigenous descent, Negro descent, by the house of your fathers, um, scattered abroad. Um, you have no power. And you're not coming to the realization that it is a spiritual war against you, which results for you carnal destruction. Uh, because the Lord removed your power from the earth because you hate his word. Right? So he let your enemy take it from you, and they've hidden it from you because it's power. It's not just words. You are to live by these words, and it gives you dominion in this world. But your people don't want to listen. So the Lord's going to raise up men who have the power to eat and drink. The great men. Um, power. You know, I watch these, these shows on YouTube. I'm guilty of it like everybody else, right? Um, you got the brothers. Every every brother who's a counselor or whatever talks about how, how the woman doesn't respect them and all that. It's because you don't have no power. Money doesn't give you power. It's just a tool. That's why you see the, the hot model. She's married to the 50-year-old, the 60-year-old guy who's got all the money. It's not the money. That's why she's with them. It's the power, right? That's why you see all the nations. They deal with Esau because he has power. That's the blessing the Lord bestowed upon him at this time. You so-called blacks, Indians, Hispanics, Mexicans, you don't have any power. So it doesn't really matter how much money you have. I mean, look at Will Smith. Right? I watched this thing with him, and he just let uh, the Jezebel jaded just talk dirty to him like it was crazy. But anyway, but that's what you want. Um, you don't have any power. Nobody's afraid of you or intimidated of you. Um, you don't know what your power is. You're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you reject knowledge, I will also reject thee. So as I've warned you before, you can keep listening to these guys. The fig tree, uh, you know, you're going to be subdued by the power with them. I'm going to show you. Power. This is about power. It's a spiritual battle against you Israelites. And the word is spirit. You don't live by it, you die. The saints, the great men, we're waiting for the power. Because the Lord's going to give you back what he promised you. Um, you might not be strongest out here now, but uh, we'll start from the beginning anyway. We're not the strongest, right? I'm a, you know, you look at me and the video, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you gonna do, right? It's not what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's what the Almighty is gonna do to His men who He has chose. Um, it's detailed in Scripture. Many people don't talk about this because they don't understand it. Um, but you gotta know it from the beginning to understand um, Adam. Um, Adam is Israel. The seed was called Isaac. Jacob was the chosen. So basically Jacob is Adam on earth and his line is Adam. So whatever Adam goes through, whatever the Lord told Adam is what Israel has to live by. They got to eat and drink to live in this earth. It's your power. But since our people hated it, the Lord took it away and let Esau split it up from you. They've just hidden it from you. But anyway, let's get it. First and foremost, give all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And all praise to you lost sheep of the house of Israel and mankind who fears God. Uh, power. That's right. You're going to have power. You men who are laboring, who are laboring hope, um, you understand, you believe these words, and you are pursuing it every day, you're going to have power. You're going to sit with your Lord at the table. Right. That's the goal. Why would I care about a Bentley when the whole world is mine? Power. That's all that matters. Let's read. The first book of Adam and Eve, chapter 40, verses one through three. Then the word of God came to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, why hadst thou not this dread, neither this fasting, nor this care ere this? Right. So he's telling Adam, now that I've kicked you out the garden, 
Why, why didn't you dread this result before I kicked you out? Dread to break my commandment. That's what you're like. Now you just think that you don't keep a commandment at all. But when, you're, when your child is killed or kidnapped, then you're saying, oh, Lord, help me. He's not hearing you. Let's read. And why hadst thou not this fear before thou didst transgress, right? How come you didn't fear me before I kicked you out the garden? That's right. Now you're in America, Adam, and Esau's about to change on you. You're not even close to what he's going to do yet. He's going to turn into Satan, and you're going to be the target. Let's read. You're going to have to be redeemed from it. But when thou camest to dwell in this strange land, thy animal body could not be on earth without earthly food. That's right. Earthly food. The fig. Earthly food. Let's read. To strengthen it and to restore its powers. That's right. And God would you his word from Adam. Right. So if you if Adam does not eat this food, if he does not eat and drink, he cannot get his powers restored. Your enemy knows this about you. So they hid it from you. This is your power. The Lord knows you rejected it. So if you read the scriptures, you realize that Israel keeps doing their own thing. They don't like to listen to the ministers who the Lord wakes up around them to tell them what they're supposed to do. Let's read Isaiah chapter 3. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, do take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Right. He took your water away from you. So what did the Romans do when they went to Jerusalem? They took your records. What's in the Vatican? Your history. Your power. But the Lord is now bringing it back to us. But a lot of our people still reject. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. Right. You don't have this water. You don't have these men around no more because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. The captain of 50 and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. Right. So since Israel lost their power, you don't have the man of war or the judge walking around in your community. Let's read. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. Right. So since you've lost this bread and this water and your power, now your community is running around with knucklehead children who rule over you. Because the man of judgment isn't walking around because you don't have the power. Let's read. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another and every one by his neighbor. Right. You're oppressed when you walk out your house. Your own people, the crips, the bloods, the drug dealers, the pimp, the prostitute, uh, the police, because you lost your power and you reject it. That's right. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Right. The children, they don't care about the old head. Right. They don't care about the old head in your community. That's right. And the base against the honorable, right. So the honorable man, the base of our society, they don't care nothing about the honorable man of the Lord. You don't care about the, 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 the crips, the, they, they laugh at the pastor, right? Because they don't got, the pastor don't got the power. So he doesn't understand what a minister of God is supposed to be like. So they're not afraid of you because you ain't going to do nothing. That's right. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. 
In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not the ruler of the people. Right. So your own brother who got, he don't want to help you out with it. That's right. Make me not the ruler of the people. I don't want to help you. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. That's right. Your tongue and your doings are against the Lord. You don't want to labor. You don't want the power. Your ministers are soft. They don't inflict judgment. Let's read. You lost all these things because you lost your power. The word is your power. Let's read. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men, you Israelites. A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul, all that he desireth. Yet God give him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. Right, so you Israelites got all this money out here, right? But you don't have your power. But your oppressor does. It's vanity for your oppressor, though, because it doesn't do anything for them. But it's an evil disease for you because you're losing a spiritual war, which is tearing your flesh in half. Let's read. If a man beget a hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul be not filled with good, you don't eat the food. And also that he have no burial, I say an untimely birth is better than he. For he cometh in with vanity and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Right, you came in vanity, you're nothing here. You depart in darkness, you don't know the truth. And your name is covered in darkness. You got your American slave given name, your Spaniard name, speaking Spanish or whatever language you're speaking now. You're in darkness. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun, nor known anything. This hath more rest than the other. Right. You knew what was going on and you perished. It's good because you're going to get the rest because you've been eating and drinking and you got the power. So the Lord is going to accept you. But if you go in darkness, mm -mm. yea, though he live a thousand years twice told, yet hath he seen no good. Do not all go to one place. All the labor of man is for his mouth. That's right. Everything you're doing is just for you to brag about. But there's no substance. Yet the appetite is not filled. Right. Um, I was looking at the rapper, uh, what's his name? J. Cole. <laughs> Made millions. His dream was to be a rapper. He did it. But now he wants to play basketball. Why? You seek oppression. Why would you want to be a basketball player? You've made all that money. Because our people... They're lost. Kyrie Irving, same things. He's made all this money, but he's still confused. You're lost. Let's read. And the Lord has cast them all. They've never learned the truth. You're watching it. For what hath the wise more than the fool? What hath the poor that know to walk before the living? Right. The poor man, Lazarus, knew to walk before the living God. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. Right. You're wanderers amongst the nations. Right. I saw this sister and the brother. They uh, moved to Japan and opened a soul food restaurant. What is it like to live as a black man in Japan? That's what the, the video was called or something like that. You're wanderers amongst the nations. You have no land. You lost your power. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Right. You get vexed wherever you are. So they were upset because they were trying to be nice to the neighbors. And the neighbors didn't want to deal with them. Because you're not seeking truth. You want money. Things that are for your mouth. You don't have the power. Let's read. That which has been is named already. And it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Right. You, you Israelite men who get this knowledge, who believe you're Lord and the truth, you can't contend with this. You're under the yoke. Right. Everyone else is not dealing with it like you. You can't contend against it. Let's read. Seeing there be many things that increase vanity, what is man the better? 
For who knoweth what is good for man in this life, all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow? For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? That's right. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. Power. Mm -hmm. The Lord has promised you. He's given us our power back, but our own people reject it. Well, me personally, you're not going to convince me otherwise. I can prove almost anything that I'm saying with just these words. Um, you as a light man, you need to get your power back. The Lord's going to wake up the elect. They're going to have this power, and they're going to subdue those who are against it. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Who who can who can give you these secrets? Right? Who's gonna tell you the secrets? The wise man. Let's read. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Right. So I, for a while when I read that I didn't understand, but now I understand it now. Okay. Your face is gonna you're not you know, didn't he say you're gods? The wise men who have the power the Lord's given to them, when they rise up, their face is going to shine like their Lord's. Let's get it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Right. So uh, imagine Lazarus during the time of judgment. Right. That wasn't his time back then. He would rise up with great boldness. His face would be shining. Let's read, because you made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. Right. You're not going to believe what's going on. Remember, the Lord said, I'm not going to meet you as a man. The same thing is going to happen to his chosen men. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. They, now you're going to repent too late, shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. Right. They make fun of you behind your back. It's not going to be funny at this time. We fools accounted his life madness. Right. They're going to account your life madness. The men who eat and drink, who do the labor, who, who have the power, they're going to think you're mad. But at this time, the tables are going to turn. All bets are off. Let's read. And his end to be without honor, right? Because you don't, because you're the, you're the men with the light. So they're going to assume that your life is not going to end in honor, but you're going to sit at the table of your Lord. He's going to give you everything. Let's read. How is he numbered among the children of God? And his lot is among the saints. That's right. You're the elect, 144,000. It's all over. Let's read. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth? Right. We erred from the way of truth. Let's read. And the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us. Right. Because the real men of the Lord have the light. So they're going to be brought down low. Let's read. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. Right. The sun. Their faces are going to shine with power. So the men who have the power, um, people don't realize, like Lazarus is an example. I had his brother tell me that Lazarus is, is Esau. I'm like, are you out of your mind? But that's what happens when you deal with these guys. You can't even have, you can't have a conversation. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just, it's all about Esau to them. Anyway, um, Lazarus was brought down low because he has the light. The Lord loved Lazarus. Right. And when the Lord, when Lazarus was risen, he sat at the table of the Lord before the Lord was about to leave. Lazarus is one of the chosen men. He loves Lazarus. He's going to have power. Um, let's read. When a man has the light, they get brought down low because they can't find their path because you're under the yoke of the Lord. Let's get it. Job chapter three. Getting distracted here, but I'll go back to it. But this is a point that you got to know. Job chapter three, even Job knows this, a man who walked perfect before the Lord. Uh, chapter three, Job verse 20. <clears throat> 
wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, right? Uh, Lazarus is in misery, right? He's poor, right? But he has the light. If you listen to Lazarus, what did, what did the rich man say? If send Lazarus so that he can testify to my father and brothers, right? Lazarus is the door. You rejected him. Let's read. And life unto the bitter in soul, right? He has life, but he's a bitter in soul. He doesn't have all the things of the world. He's pulled aside. Which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is hid and whom God have hedged in? Right. His way of prosperity is hid. He can't find that. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are as a man of the Lord. If the Lord has you under the yoke, you're not going to get the prosperity of this world. It's not for you. This is your riches. He has pulled you out for the knowledge. He's going to give you your power at the end. Let's read. What was that? Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. I'm getting sidetracked again. 2 Samuel chapter 7. What is it? Right. Let's start at verse 8. Now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep. Right. David is has the light. He's pulled him away from the sheep. He's the anointed. He's under the law of liberty because the Lord has him hedged in. His portion was to be king over Israel. You elect are the same thing. He's pulled you out from your people. You have the light. So if you are brought down low, know that's part of the portion. Let's read. Let's get back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Sorry about that. I had to give some understanding to that. We uh, Wisdom of Solomon, verse 7. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have not gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Right. That's right. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 2. Let's continue there. That's right. The men who have the light, there's a chance you, if they're the like an apostle, they're going to be brought down low. They're going to teach men that could probably still be good in the world. But the man with the light is brought down low. Let's read. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard to the oath of God. Right. The king's commandment to Adam was that in this earth, you cannot live unless you eat and drink. Labor at the word. That's your job. Let's read. That's the king's commandment to an Israelite. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a king is, there is power. That's right. Wherever your king is speaking, wherever his words are, there is power. You follow a lamb, whithersoever he goeth. Not what your camp leader says, not what your pastor says, not what the Bible destruction group done. No. The Lord leads you by the spirit to find his words so you gain understanding, so you get this power. Let's read. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Right, because you're under the law of liberty. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Right. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Right. So we're we're in the time right now. We're watching judgment. We're in the line of man. And your misery is great. Because you're watching your people get shot by police. You're watching all these prophecies be fulfilled. But it's not our time yet. Let's read. It's coming. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it, sh when it shall be? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Right. You you're, uh, you like the wickedness of the world? You don't want to keep the Lord's commandment? You're not going to be delivered. 
All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun, right? To every work. Solomon wants to know how the sun and the moon works, the stars, the seasons. Why are these people like this and why are we like this? He's applying his heart to have real knowledge, power. Let's read. Knowledge is power. And it's going to give you your power if you live by it. There is a time where one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. Right. Their rule, Esau, Edom is ruling over you to their own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy. And they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men. Is fully set in them to do evil, right? The hearts of the sons of men, you elect. Your hearts are going to be set. The Lord wants your heart set to do evil because you're watching all this evil happen to you. He's made a promise to you. That's why time has to pass. He wants you to have the knowledge so you can have the same vengeance in your heart that he does. It's twofold. Let's read. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him, Isaiah 66, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before Yahweh. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth. But there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Right. Many people are going to become just because what the wicked men on the earth are doing, especially you Israelites in your community. You're going to become just because you're tired of looking at it. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this is also vanity. Right. So. The work of the righteous. So you, many of your people are going to turn wicked because they don't want to believe this truth. What, is, what does it say in Amos? Uh, no evil should come upon us. They're, they just love their wickedness, right? Then I commended mirth because a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. For that shall abide with him of all his of his labor the days of his life which God giveth him under the sun, because you have the light. This knowledge is from the Lord. Let's read. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth, for also there is that neither day nor night see sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yet further, though a wise man think to know it, yet he should not be able to find it. Right. You can't find it. Each person, each one of you men are going to have your own portion. Some people are seeking wisdom, but they're just never going to find it because it's not given to them. Their portion is what they got in this world. Let's get it. Proverbs chapter 8. That's right. The men of the Lord are going to do evil. Um, Isaiah uh, is at chapter 41. Who can do good and evil? The men of the Lord. To be dismayed. Let's read. Doth not uh, Proverbs chapter eight verses one through twenty one. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right, shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, and there is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. That's right. Find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. 
for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. That's right. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. That's right, because this is how you get your power to understand what you're supposed to be doing. By the Lord, kings reign and the princes of the Lord decree justice. Judgment. Let's read, because we've lost that. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth, you Israelites. By your Lord you rule. I love them that love me. Right. These guys, they don't love their Lord. They're the fig tree. That's why I told you not to deal with them. Let's read because they're not finding the knowledge. He's not leading them to it. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. That's right. To inherit something. You love your Lord. He, you're going to get the power, and you're going to inherit substance. That's right. Let's give all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. This is going to be power part one, and be on the lookout for part two. And I'll praise to you, lost sheep of the house of Israel, and mankind who fears God. Power. Shalom.